St. Patrick is beloved to the people around the world. His feast day is celebrated widely by Catholics and non-Catholics alike. In contrast to his prolific popularity, the details of his life are rather unknown, and the pieces that we do have may surprise most people. For one thing, he lived much longer ago than we might realize. The church was still quite young. Born circa 385, St. Patrick died sometime between the years 462 and 493. Furthermore, this most beloved Irish saint was not Irish, but Romano-British. In fact, he initially arrived in Ireland not by his own choice, but as an abducted slave. As a teenager, he was abducted by pirates and made slave by the pagan Irish. He worked as an enslaved shepherd for six years before escaping and returning to Britain. He was not a devout Christian before his captivity, but underwent a conversion of heart while enslaved. Rather than letting his sufferings harden his heart, the pain of slavery led him to deep trust and belief. Though enslaved, St. Patrick's spiritual life deepened as he began to find freedom in his faith. After Patrick's escape to Britain, he continued to study the Christian faith. His deep faith and trust led him to radical obedience to God's will, even to the point of being called back to the land he was enslaved in. A few years after returning home, Patrick had a vision. I saw a man coming, as it were, from Ireland. His name was Victor Rikus, and he carried many letters, and he gave me one of them. I read the heading, The Voice of the Irish. As I began the letter, I imagined in that moment that I heard the voice of those very people who were near the wood of Folklet, which is beside the Western Sea, and they cried out as with one voice, We appeal to you, holy servant boy, to come and walk among us. Patrick responded to this vision with extraordinary courage. Upon his ordination as a priest, he returned to Ireland as a missionary. There he spent all his strength and the rest of his life bringing Christ to the pagan Irish. He suffered numerous hardships and dangers for the gospel, facing death at every moment among hostile people. Yet he continued to rely on faith and serve the Irish people obediently. I cannot keep silent, nor would it be proper. So many favors and graces has the Lord deigned to bestow on me in the land of my captivity. Despite the fact that he lived so long ago, we still have his personal writings today. His autobiography can be found in the Confessio of St. Patrick. Patrick's words course with strength, wisdom, and true power founded in humility. I am Patrick. Yes, a sinner, and indeed untaught. Yet I am established here in Ireland where I profess myself bishop. I am certain in my heart that all that I am I have received from God. So I live among barbarous tribes. A stranger, an exile for the love of God, I speak out too for love of my neighbors, who are my only sons. For them I gave up my home country, my parents, and even pushing my own life to the brink of death. If I have any worth, it is to live my life for God, so as to teach these peoples, even though some of them still look down on me. Patrick's love and courage were powerful, and God made much from his humble obedience. Patrick evangelized the land of Ireland and eventually saw the Catholic faith take root in the hearts of its people. Many Irish men and women became monks and nuns. Even sons of powerful pagan Irish chieftains became devout Christians. Patrick writes, Never before did they know of God except to serve idols and unclean things. But now... They have become the people of the Lord and are called children of God. The sons and daughters of the leaders of the Irish are seen to be monks and virgins of Christ. St. Patrick's feast day, of course, is March 17th, the day on which he died according to tradition. It is indeed a day worth celebrating. If you'd like to discover and learn more about St. Patrick and his relevance for the 21st century, click the link in the description below.